this is Kevin for pixavert.com now in this video I'm gonna make the sort of surreal or rather hyper real image that you saw at the beginning I've chosen this image which I really like the woman has a very neat hairstyle which is particularly good for this kind of effect now there are a few issues and having evaluated the image I've decided most of the issues are in the blue channel so I'm gonna make a copy of the blue channel and we're gonna paste that in the layers and use that a bit later on now I'm going to tuck the blue channel in the background and what I want to do also is to make a copy of the original and we'll use the copy of the original later on as well. The main adjustment we're going to use with this image is the shadows and highlights adjustment. So there's a trick you can use with this particular adjustment where if you create a smart object from the layer that you want to apply it to, it acts like a smart filter. Right click on the layer, choose convert to smart object and then go to image, adjustments, shadows and highlights. Now the settings I'm going to go for are going to create a sharp, clear, bright image and because it's acting like a smart filter we'll be able to remember those settings for future. Get rid of the smart filter mask which I'm not going to use and I'm going to create an adjustment layer called channel mixer and I basically found that this was very useful in clearing some of the problems in this image and I found that basically through trial and error. So I'm going to go to the blue channel and I'm just going to lower the contrast of the blue channel. Next I'm going to create another adjustment layer. This one is going to be a solid color, pure white. The best blending mode to use is soft light. However, that produces an effect which is too bright and too general. And what I want to do is to target the effect using a layer mask based on the original blue channel. And I'm going to apply the blue channel to the layer mask using the apply image command. To tone it down even more, I'm going to use the advanced blending and what I need to do is just to slide the underlying layer black slider along using the Alt or Option key and that allows some of the darker colors underlying this layer to come through. Now if we make a comparison, we can see that we sharpened the image up and brightened up the shadows. But I want to sharpen it up a bit more using a high pass filter. So I'm going to stamp a copy of the image we've got so far and apply a reasonably high high pass filter, about 3 pixels, and put that on overlay mode. And it's command option, shift and E or control alt, shift and E to stamp a new layer. Now I've created a new channel mixer adjustment and I'm just going to alter the settings for the blue channel. What I'm trying to do is to correct the histogram so the histogram stretches across all the available space without clipping. Basically that returns the contrast to the blue channel and reverses the change that we made earlier on. I'm just going to use my eye to judge the settings and that looks fine. And uh, now once that's done, we need to add a black and white adjustment layer, just to tone down the colors. And I'm going to put that on an opacity of 50%. Now this is where the real work begins. I want to separate this model from her background. And I'm going to use the original image for that. It works the best in this particular case. The quick selection tool I find sometimes works best when you're very quick in making your selection rather than when you're hesitant. And having made the selection, including the table at the front, I'm going to go to the refine edge and there I'm going to choose a small smart radius going to shift the image inwards and I'm going to smooth it all the way and that looks good so now I'm going to hit the OK and Photoshop does its magic now we're going to use this on another black and white layer so I'm going to create an adjustment layer black and white and it automatically creates a mask using the selection we need to invert that mask because I just want to apply this effect to the background. Now I'm going to add a tint. It's a very dark color 25-20-15 in the RGB and I'm going to just use the slider. I'm going to use the color picker tool just to darken the image a little bit. 
and I'm even going to put it on multiply mode just to darken it more and next I'm going to create a curves adjustment and just darken the image Alt drag the mask onto the curves adjustment and that helps to target the background and make it darker uh, reduce the opacity a bit now I've already done the black and white and curves earlier on and added a couple of other items so that's the black and white and the curves I've added some blue to the girl's eyes using a solid color and a mask and also a bit of a vignette so I can now get rid of the two layers that I just created we don't need this anymore just put those in the background I want to sharpen the image a bit more now so I'm going to stamp the image onto a new layer and again use the high pass filter could use a lower setting if I want to and maybe put it on soft light so that the effect isn't so punchy and I'm going to increase the opacity of the vignette because I think it does need that uh, I'm going to stamp the image again onto a new layer and this time just add a bit of noise you know um, the noise somehow seems to tie the image together and that basically is it So we've got our model there, she's very keen to allow us to examine her fingernails and they are very good fingernails I have to say. And personally I think it looks a bit good, I think it could have been a bit brighter. So that's the original and that's what we created. With this kind of thing I think you can work on it a bit more and get a pretty good result. So that's it and thank you very much for watching.